welcome Anastasia Chatska, a fashion designer with over 20 years of experience and a sewing educator. And I'm really excited you're here to share another sewing adventure with me today. Welcome to Sewing Anastasia, and today I'm going to show you how to serge on your home sewing machine. What? If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit subscribe and hit that little notification bell so that way you know when all of my new videos come out. Also, I'm now teaching virtual sewing lessons so you can sign up for a private virtual sewing lesson or join one of my group virtual sewing lessons and get some new sewing friends. Or if you're in Chicago, you can sign up and take one of my socially distant sewing classes in my design studio here in Chicago, Illinois. Information for all that is gonna be down below or you can just head over to sewanastasia.com. So I know in my videos you're always hearing me say, okay, now we're gonna surge this, we're gonna surge this, that, go to your serger, etc. But what if you don't have a serger? What are you going to do in place of the serge stitch? Well, there are a few different stitches on your home sewing machine that we can do that are going to replicate the serge effectiveness and stitch. So the serge is all about finishing the edge so that way it doesn't fall apart, right? So we're gonna go over a few stitches that you can do on your home sewing machine so every time me or somebody else says, now let's search, you'll know exactly what to do. We are gonna go over two stitches that are on every sewing machine. So everybody should be able to follow along with this on your sewing machine. Today I'm gonna to be using the Husqvarna Viking Epic 95Q. You can use any sewing machine that you have though because almost every single sewing machine has these two stitches. The first one we're gonna go over is the zigzag stitch. So we need to select the zigzag stitch. And there are so many stitches on here that look like zigzags, right? So I wanna pick the zigzag stitch that's centered. And I also wanna make sure that it doesn't have any little broken stitches in it. This is for stitching knitwear. So make sure you're just selecting a regular zigzag stitch. I also like to make my stitch a little bit wider and a little bit longer. There's no right or wrong as to how wide or long you make this, but I like to make it just a little bit wider and longer. When we do the zigzag stitch, we wanna make sure the zigzag is coming on the fabric and off the fabric and on the fabric and off the fabric. So it's gonna bind this raw edge and prevent the fabric from fraying. So all these little fibers here that wanna come out of the fabric are going to be sandwiched in that zigzag stitch that we're going to create down the edge of the fabric. I'm going to line up my fabric with the center of the foot so that way the stitch goes on and off the fabric and make sure you back stitch as well. Back stitch at the end and cut. Now you can see the edge of the fabric is bound in the zigzag stitch. So the edge of your fabric is not going to fray anymore. So if we fold this other side over and you look at the raw edge that you can pull the fibers out of, first the other one, none of these fibers are gonna escape now because we've zigzagged it shut. The second stitch I'm going to show you that's going to replicate the serge on the edge is going to be an overcast stitch. Before we start our overcast stitch, we need to put on the overcast foot. If you're using a Viking sewing machine, it's going to be the J foot. So if you don't have a Viking sewing machine, no worries. Just go ahead and find the equivalent of the J foot for your sewing machine. We have a few different overcast stitches on here, but we want to select the one that says 16. So it's a straight line and it looks like it has a ladder. So you'll notice what it looks like over here. You might be wondering what's the one that has the angle on it. So this one's gonna be for knitwear, but we're using a woven fabric right now. So we're gonna go ahead and use the one with the straight line. So I have my J foot on and I'm gonna go ahead and line up the fabric with the inner edge of the foot. I'm also gonna back stitch when I start. Notice that the stitch is doing a straight stitch, but it's also coming over to the right to bind the edge of the fabric, creating this little ladder.
back stitch at the end, and cut. Look how nice our overcast stitch looks. So it's bound the edge of our fabric so none of those little fibers are going to escape and it's also reinforced with a straight stitch to the left. So you can see how nice the overcast stitch is for finishing up the edge of a raw piece of fabric. The zigzag and the overcast are great options when you don't have a serger. So remember, anytime you see instructions that say go ahead and serge the edge, you can totally overcast or zigzag in place of the serge. I went ahead and serged a piece of fabric so you can see what the serge looks like from the serger. And that way we can compare it to the overcast stitch and the zigzag. I also want to mention that you could make your zigzag stitch wider if you wanted it to cover more of the fibers. So you can see that the serge stitch is a little bit stronger. It also has four spools of thread creating this stitch and it trims off the edge at the same time. But these two stitches here will do just fine in about any project you have. I hope you had fun learning how to serge without a serger. What? That was so cool, right? If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. As always, make sure you check me out on Instagram at SoAnastasia and Anastasia Chatska. And I would love to see the projects you're working on. So make sure you tag me in them or DM me photos of your projects. And that way I can share them so I can share the creativity with everybody. Also, I'm trying to get 100,000 followers. And we're so close. Well, not really. But I will be closer if you start sharing all the videos and tell everybody about So Anastasia. I would love it so much because I would love to keep doing this and bringing you guys awesome videos. Also, you can take virtual sewing lessons with me right now. You can take them one-on-one -on -one or you can join a group virtual lesson. Or if you're in Chicago, you can totally come into the studio and take one of my socially distanced sewing classes. Information for all of that is going to be down below or you can head over to SewAnastasia.com. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.